New York Times recently had a really interesting article about uh, Bain uh, at the time that Mitt Romney used to run it. And uh, it was pretty complicated in terms of a, they dealt with a lot of different companies, how do they make their money, etc. So I wanted to simplify it for you guys and break it down so that everybody can understand it. Because oftentimes Bain Capital would make money even if their investors lost money or the companies that they had bought went under. And that's confusing. Why? How, how are they making money when everybody else lost money? Well, let me show you. So first, let's talk about how Bain Capital used to make money. They have many, many different ways. Let me show you. One is fees. I'll get into fees a little bit more later, but basically they would charge a fee for whatever they did, including even buying the company. The second way they made money is percentage of investors' money. So an investor would come and say, hey, Bain, and, and they had a pretty good track record of getting uh, money back to their investors. So they say, we're going to take 2% of your money whether we lose or gain. And now look, the investors agreed to it, so they can charge it as long as they agree. So they made money in that way. Even if they lose money, they get at least 2% of the whole cash. And then a percentage of profits. On top of that, if we make money for you, so for example, if they gave a, you gave $100, which of course they wouldn't take because it's too small, but for the sake of simplicity, they take $2 out of it right away and put it in their pocket. And then if on that 100, the remaining $98, they made 10%, well, then they would also get a percentage of those profits. That could range from 10 to 20% extra, right? And then they would invest in the business themselves from time to time. That's actually a good thing because that gets you invested in whatever project you're doing so you have an incentive to make sure that it goes well. So that's not bad. Dividends, this is a huge problem, okay? This is where they take money out of a company because they put debt onto a company. I'll explain that a little bit more later. Fees and dividends are your biggest problems. And by the way, they also made up money in a secret way, which is that when they took debt out of a company and then they paid it back in loans, then they wouldn't have to pay income tax on it. So they also took advantage of the tax code to make a little bit of extra money. So let's talk about fees a little bit more. What kind of fees did they charge? Well, this is where it gets a little comical. They would charge a, a fee to the company for buying the company. Because at once they have controlling interest, they can charge whatever the hell they like, it's going straight into their pocket. They would also, of course, have a fee for managing the company. They'd have a fee if they invested more money in the company. They'd have a fee if they took more money out of the company. They'd have a fee if they bought smaller companies for the larger company. And finally, they'd have a fee for selling the company. So now, after they've taken all those fees out, if the investors made a couple of bucks or the company itself uh, also had some profit, great. If they didn't, who cares? In fact, let's show you a couple of examples. All right, first one is a simple one. It's GS Industries. And they purchased it for $8.3 million. That's why they're called leverage buyouts, because they put in $8.3 million, and then they get a lot more loans on top to be able to buy the company from their original owner. And they, after they got all those loans, they paid themselves a dividend of $33.9 million. In fact, they took out a debt of $125 million. So here's the interesting part about dividends, right? Because once they take the $125 million from the bank to put into the company, now if it was your company, what you would do is you would invest in the company. Maybe you buy plants, you hire more workers, so that the company can make more money down the road. But oftentimes, that's not what Bain did. Bain would take about $34 million of that money and put it in their pocket. And they go, I already made money on this. Now if the company goes bankrupt, who cares? I put in 8.3, I made 33.9. They're right. For them, it doesn't matter at all. In fact, what happened to GS Industries? They went bankrupt. Now, everybody that worked there, they lost their jobs. So if you had a pension there, sad day for you. If that was your job, sad day for you. If you were an investor, sad day for you. But Bain makes money either way. And this scam is ridiculous, where they go to a bank, they say, okay, here, give me money for the company. Ah, I'm not going to use it for the company. I'm going to put it in my pocket. All right even a larger case, Cambridge Industries, okay? Now we're gonna break this down even more. So they declared bankruptcy in May of 2000. Now this was a company that Bain bought and managed. So they had taken out $300 million in debt. So the guys who gave them the debt got screwed. Uh, they got $15.7 million from outside investors. Those investors screwed, they lost all their money, okay? And even Bain had put in money, $2.2 .2 million, and so they lost that too. Now if all you saw was this, you say, hey look, sometimes businesses go up, sometimes they go down, everybody lost, that's capitalism for you. That's what I would say, right? But that's not all. Now let's take another uh, look at another slide here. So what happened in the uh, bankruptcy? Well, here comes the fees. 
Bain collected $2.25 million as a transaction fee for when they first bought the company. But wait a minute, you just saw that their original investment was $2.2 million. So how do you like that financial trickery? Oh, I, don't worry, I'm investing in this company. Here's $2.2 million. Okay, now my fee for investing in this company, $2.25 million. So you already have an instant profit and immediately you don't care what happens to the company. Now, if there's more profit, great. But so, more fees, $950,000 a year in quarterly advisory fees. They're in bankruptcy. They're not paying anybody. They're still paying Bain Capital these advisory fees. But wait a minute, how good could their advice have been if you went bankrupt? And why are you paying the consultants who drove you into bankruptcy while you've got all these creditors who are getting screwed? Okay, now here's one of my favorites. This, they convinced the company to do a restructuring of their debt so that they could get $17 million out. Now, in order to do that, they had to pay an early withdrawal prepayment penalty. Of course, to pay $2 million. So forget the $17 million, that's the money that went to the company itself. They had to pay $2 million to pay them early. Now, if you pay your debt late, that's another fee. If you pay your debt early, that's a $2 million fee. No matter what you do, fee, 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 fee. In fact, by the end, Bain garnered over $10 million in five years. Now remember, their original investment, only $2.2 million, so they made a tremendous profit. So what happened to the company? Let's take a look. Well, investors lost $15.7 million, the company got shut down, and the employees lost all their jobs. This is what Bain Capital and Mitt Romney calls sad day for you. Is it a sad day for them? No. Let's take a look at that. No. Bain lost the $2.2 million in investment, but they made $10 million in fees, so they had a gain of $7.8 million while everybody else got screwed. All the employees, all the investors, everybody lost everything, except somehow, magically, in that failure and bankruptcy, Bain, who was managing it, proud to be managing it, brags about managing it, drove them into bankruptcy and made $7.8 million doing it. Now, Bain didn't lose money on all their uh, companies and oftentimes they made tremendous profits for their investors and sometimes the companies would go into bankruptcy and the investors would make money anyway but no matter what happened the company does well the company goes bankrupt Bain makes a tremendous amount of money because they rigged the system in their favor now if you're thinking about voting for Mitt Romney for president now I need you to keep that in mind now a lot of you might look at that and go well that's smart you know uh, credit to him for uh, having suckers invest in his company, having the sucker banks giving them the, the, the loans that they wound up putting in their pockets, etc. But keep in mind who Mitt Romney cares about. He cares about himself. So if you think that once he becomes president, all of a sudden he's not going to worry about his bottom line, that he's not going to operate in exactly this way, and then if you lose your job, who cares? Did Mitt Romney get paid? Did his contributors give him enough money to win the election, to buy the election? Yeah, okay, that's what he cares about. Is, does his supporters make money? Does he make money? That's what he cares about. You think he cares about your bottom line? And remember, this is the central thing that Mitt Romney is running his campaign on. What a success he was at Bain Capital and how he knows business. But the business he knows isn't about creating jobs, let alone here in America. It's about how to make money while screwing everyone else over. Now, if you think that's good in our president, then you go ahead and vote for Mitt Romney. And maybe you think as an investor, sometimes it might work out for you, and sometimes you might get screwed and you want to put money into Bain Capital. That's a different ball game. But if the guy who's running our country thinks the only thing he cares about is his own bottom line, no matter who else gets hurt, I don't think that's good for our country.